Great. So how many of you have gone through the requirements document, read fifth chapter in that book, The Sea Companion, related that understanding that you got from that chapter to these requirements? How many of you did that? You can type. How many of you did that? You can use raise your you can raise your hand. I read. Yeah, you read. After that, what did you do? Did, did you write an essay about requirements? That's the that's the task given to write. The task that was given is go through the document and then go through the fifth chapter, which talks about how you will elaborate and write an essay based on the requirements. How many did that? I did some analysis. Okay. I completed it in the chapter just now. Okay. Sagar, are you also having dinner? No, I'm see. Oh, I'm switching the camera. Yeah. Hmm. read the requirements document. So this session now would be then a bit difficult for you to comprehend. You may have to revisit this session, but we'll go ahead with the session. Do I have your approval? Because some things will not make sense because you haven't gone through the thing, but we have to move forward. Today is an important topic because of because we will we will be doing this topic or you will be dwelling on this topic in a deeper sense, and this paves the path for you to come up with the code in a different manner. People who read chapter five in uh, C Companion, what you have understood is that you elaborate the essay, you refine the essay, and finally you end up with the pseudo code. Yes or no? Now, you will do the same process of coming to the pseudocode, but we will reach the pseudocode using pictures, using diagrams. So the first diagram that we are going to use, and these diagrams come from unified model la modeling language. How many of you heard about UML? Type me in the chat box. Okay. Most of you. And people who have been with a company where they use C++ or something, the de facto term might be the UML thing that we have used UML. And you would also, you would also have seen use case diagrams. How many of you have seen use case diagrams or know about use case diagrams? Type me in the chat box. Okay, Amrit says me. Chaitanya says, Shubankar Das says, okay, right. So before we get into the core of this today's session, how many of you are interested to know who did what in the last two days and where were you in the game? How many of you are interested? Type interested in the chat box. Oh, 12 people, what happened? Avatars, where are we? That yes, curve, what, what is happening? So let me share the screen and then I'll show you. So we, we did we did this uh, thing. I mean, I, I did this exercise uh, at afternoon when it was afternoon, okay? So that time, whatever the interest, uh, I mean, whatever the information I had, I used that. So any change? Yeah. They say, right, any change, the jurisdiction or the cases can be filed, whatever it is, you don't have that luxury. So let me share the screen. Yes. If you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, 
book a one on one call with me link is in the description so who started the game or those people who actually posted so you know by yourself like who posted who did not post it so let me put uh, everything Th this is the thing these are the things that will be put into the linkedin also and we are doing that who where you are and the whatsapp group also something like reality show but not exactly reality show so these are the avatars and the names a1 a2 a3 and this is your name versus whatever is your avatar so this will be put into the resources folder so you know which avatar is yours no the first we will process every day you put a post you get 10 points as of now we are not being strict with respect to how is the hashtag and who are the um, are you or whether you are tagging us or not but from now it will be considered that whether you are putting that code to career hashtag because the i i already told you have to put that hashtag because we want to click that hashtag and we get all the posts so that then we by we see that who has done what and go to their profiles so this is the latest thing till afternoon if you have done anything in the afternoon it will be considered as tomorrow so who is a4 who is a11 who is a9 a3 a7 a6 a4 let us take now the 20 points a11 viresh has done two posts a9 anirudh a3 umer khan and then a7 orion aditya these are the people who are now half of the first week progress as of now we are considering only linkedin thing so two posts 10 10 points 20 points we have done only one one post 10 points from tomorrow we will also check your uh, correct tagging and also the hashtag clear so can we have a round of applause for people who have if you want to work with me personally where i guarantee to work with you until you secure a well paid job book a one on one call with me link is in the description so who kick started their journey and they are 20 at 20 points and and this is going to get excited because you you will be learning so many things there will be certain kind of activities wherein um, who who has done the beautiful uml diagram and all those kind of things use case diagram we want to add so many things so now let's shift the case and now come to the important points the technical stuff use case diagrams are the first kind of diagrams in uml that people draw and there are there are various uh, how should i say there are various ways of bringing out the use case diagrams so two two very important characters or the two, two important elements of use case diagram are actors and system actors are those entities which truly act or they are we can say as users from that term came the use case diagram but uml defines them as not users because users cannot be always users which always denotes that there is a human behind it so it brings out a separate nomenclature to it called as actors now what in general use case teaches or what in gen general if i have to say a definition of use case as a is a it defines a sequence of actions that an actor many a times or most of the times it would be a person but sometimes an external entity such as another system and it performs its action within certain boundary or a constrained or a restricted environment to achieve a particular goal for example in our case which is a smart thermostat where you know that the person the user 
human will have a mobile phone or an app and there it is an intelligent thermostat and you can send the settings, the temperature to set everything through a HTTP request. It reaches the thermostat and it programs its memory and tunes to that, adjusts the temperature to that reading what the user requested. Now help me understand with the definition that I told that within the system or within the gamut of things that are played by the user. Now in this case, the, the user, the real user who holds that mobile phone, what do you think are the sequence of, or what do you think are the kind of actions that user can do? The question I am repeating again, you know the requirements, you have gone through the requirements and you, you know what we are doing. The user is sending a command, it goes through the internet, now we are saying it's a lightweight HTTP protocol over you what it is going. Then it reaches to the thermostat and the thermostat will do the required operation of setting its temperature as the user asked it to do. Now in this complete sequence of actions that I told or in the story that I narrated, what do you think the user can start doing or what are the set of actions that the user is permitted to do? type in the chat box. As a end user, if you have that mobile phone with that smart application, which will control the smart thermostat, what operations do you intend to do? Type in the chat box. On off control with respect to temperature setting. Okay. Request set. Okay, Amrit, can you elaborate request set? Uh, maybe retrieve the current settings and then give the input for what it, uh, what the required settings would be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we can you can unmute an answer also. What are the set of interactions or actions? Do you think you as a user of that smart thermostat with a mobile app in your hand can do? Yeah, type in the chat box or can able to see the temperature, can able to control the settings, okay. If you want to work with me personally where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. People who have done that small IoT projects where you have put it the, they have put the sensor value in things speak and all those things, think as a user like, and that is precisely the reason I told to read the requirements and start writing an essay because you will get into the shoes of a developer understanding a requirement. Other people type in the chat box. Dynamic update in the GUI. Okay. Sagar, what do you think? Shubankar, as a user, what do you want to do? Let me put like this. As a user, what do you want to do? You have the power in your hand through app you can do now. What do you want to do? We day in and day out use so many apps, right? To see the current temperature, perfect. Energy control, okay. Maintain temperature during shipping. What is the shipping? So sometimes we send sometimes we send the parcel which requires the particular the product to be stored in particular temperature. For example, medicines. Medicines are uh, are manufactured in one corner of the world and maybe uh, sent sent via a, a flight shipping services to the other corner of the world. So, mm -hmm. 
so temperature should be maintained for that medicine so that it should not get spoiled during the transportation period okay you are you are essentially saying that your thermostat is now connected to a container which ships certain products which need to be transferred or transported under certain restrictions especially temperature and all those things right yeah? okay so i th th this is a, this is a usage of your thermostat but in general i am asking at a very generic level what are the actions that you can you are legally permitted to do so let us see the answers what we got maintain temperature during shipping fine i understand continuously monitor the temperature energy control see the current temperature dynamic update in gui can be able to see temperature and can be able to control the settings set let us take this set before i even interact with the thermostat controlled put it in my house put in the house maybe my main room dining room or the place where i want to take nap i first want to set the temperature i want to tell to the temp thermostat that 25 degrees is the optimum temperature i want you to set very basic operation it's like you logging into the application and you typing in the password you are setting the password so that next time when you want to ask and get into the application you may say that save the password and every time you enter into the pass application you just enter into the application similarly once you tell to the thermostat saying that set this temperature it set it gets set and it always aims 24 bar 7 to maintain that temperature in that particular room are you all with me simplest use case now let us see how we can draw that particular use case and in the requirements document if you have seen thoroughly i have already added a link which is a wikipedia link for use cases how many of you have seen that yeah you you need to go through that to understand this nevertheless let me start let me share let me share the screen if you want to work with me personally where i guarantee to work with you until you secure a well paid job book a one on one call with me link is in the description so wherever you see the uml diagram certain notation is formed now certain notation is uh, followed i am not going to go deep into uml because that's a subject or a study all by itself we are trying to use that unified modeling language to solve and decipher our requirements so that we get that minimal set of diagrams uml diagrams which will aid us to start writing the code at the end of the process of this analysis and let me tell you this is what is the analysis if you happen to hear some advertisements youtube ad saying that low level design low level design high level design this is what is that you are, we are essentially doing that so the first thing that i told is the user who interacts with this system the simple notation i am a lefty trying to draw with the right hand do not comment about the diagrams okay so this is the notation for actor and this is the notation for your system or the boundary of the system now here is the most important thing there are various ways to look at use cases and there are good books there is a book by the name and this is a book that i got xeroxed because that that at that point of time uh, i was very low in my budget i was only earning few thousands so and this book was also very rare so i got it xeroxed so if you want you can find this book i don't know whether now it is being published or not but use case driven object modeling with uml yeah it's a very good book it talks about something called as domain analysis and then it comes to the next part 
Now, what is domain analysis? Whenever now you are from now onwards, whenever you are thinking about our project, your implementation and all those things, understand that you it is pertaining to certain IoT domain. It's a technology, but I'm just referring it as a domain. Like we say automotive domain, networking domain, something like that. So your HTTP implementation, anything and everything that you do has certain domain analysis. Because we are in certain kind of domain, what, what actually happens is we pick up certain kind of terminology which are pertaining to certain domain. I cannot step into an ice cream parlor and ask for red bangles. Does it really make sense that I enter into an ice cream parlor and I say that bhaiya, churiya hai kya? Bindi hai kya? He will, he will look for the three number phone number which goes to somewhere. When you are in certain domain, you use the terminology. Like for example, packet, protocol, high level, low level. In, a, in other domain, that might not come. So that's the domain analysis which will help you collect that, end, that vocabulary. Now you come to that kind of use case diagram where you say, I want to act when the user starts interacting with the system, what does he do? So the simplest use case diagram which uh, Amrut has mentioned is set the temperature. It's a oval, the user interacts with the system and this is the system and this boundary is, I'm writing system but actually this is not system, this is our Maybe I can say application or let me call it smart thermostat system, something like that. But I abstract away all the things which are internal to my understanding as of now because I'm starting at the top. Step by step, I will refine. Now, with the when the use case starts, I start now my narration, my storytelling that I, as a user, could be human here, could be some other system, want to interact with this smart thermostat system by setting the temperature. This is the set use case. What happens inside it and all those things, we are not worrying now. I make this statement, I create a diagram for this and I move to the next use case. Is this clear? Type C in the chat box. Now you started. You know that ultimately something I will do, there will be a code, there will be number of functions which actually get this set operation done because of which certain value gets stored in the thermostat. But as of now, I'm not worrying about it. I'm just saying that I say this is one of the use cases or this is one of the ways in which the user interacts with the system. And there is another thing, get use case or read the temperature value that the user gives a command and the thermostat responds by sending the current settings, current temperature value, whatever it is, which is asked by the user. The point I'm trying to here highlight is this. When you start narrating or when you start playing these roles that I am a user, you are or I am interacting with smart thermostat system. The first statement I would make is I want to set the temperature. Okay, fine. You want to set the temperature. But the question now comes how? Then the story starts now. Imagine a movie where the first scene is a scene where a murder has been committed. You, 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 you are given the big problem at the top of the, at the starting of the movie, right? The police caravan, that all that sound and all those things. Now the story unfolds. And when it is unfolding, 
you see characters coming in, dialogues getting exchanged, some suspense, and we have this uh, stupid comedy illogically inserted. Hero sees heroine, then meaningless songs, all those things come. And these are now the bugs in your program. If you don't narrate a proper script, you end up in those kind of scenarios also, which may end up the bugs, as bugs when you are start implementing. So refine your use cases once you have it done. Now for the set use case, what I would do is set the temperature, the top level understanding. Now the second stage is I will send the temperature value or the as a user, I type in my temperature value and I send it through my application or whatever, through a console or whatever. Now the third stage, I use UART protocol to send the thing. The fourth step can be through UART, I will create or I will take the temperature value and package it into a lightweight HTTP protocol packet. And then I use UART method of communication to send it to the thermostat. Now I will elaborate more. When I get the data, I will check the value of the, I will see whether the value is genuine value or not. Some checks are coming in. Then when I will create a packet of HTTP, then I will insert the temperature into it. Now I keep on, when I keep on talking, when I keep on talking, 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 you see, I am refining the use case and my narration slowly is peeling one by one layer that this top level objective needs to, if at all this top level objective needs to happen, these are all the low level things that needs to be done. Are you clear till now? Because these are the use cases you need to execute for yourself. There is one software called, if I don't know if you people are aware, called Star UML, which is freely available. It is as good as any professional UML tools or the tool with, through which you can draw UML diagram, Star UML. You can download it. It, it, gets, it has, I think, it has for uh, Mac as well as Windows. And you can do use case diagrams in that. Now there is a trick here, no, not trick. There is a method I want to tell to create use case diagrams. And that powerful method is called class responsibility collaboration. Now, why is it called class responsibility collaboration is because typically these U UML and all those things came up when the object oriented programming started picking up. And everything is an object in object oriented programming because the name itself says, but the abstract nature of an object is called class. By the way, let me ask this question like, how many of you? If you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. You are aware of object oriented programming. Heard about it, heard about classes, saw some C++ program or maybe Java or Python, I don't know. Amrut, Umer, Anirudh, most of you. So the class is the template out of which you create objects. CRC cards technique helps in coming out with those set of top level classes. Some might be pure, having pure virtual functions because of which they become abstract classes. Some can be even concrete classes also, in the sense, a class from which you can create an object. But it depends how well you refine your use case diagrams, you go ahead with this narration and you clear out nonsense from what makes sense. Now, why is this so important? When a requirement comes to you, the mind will go all around. We will think saying that, okay, let me add this, let me add that, this is good to have, this is not good to have. Even though I have given a requirements and saying that this is the required requirement, this is good to have requirement and this is an enhancement, but even the must have requirement, when you start thinking, you may find that, okay, let, can I do this? Can I do that? What if I do this? And all those things. But when you start now narrating the use case, and really peeling one by one, what happens is you will understand 
intuitively you will get a feeling that this can be done, this can't be done. This is easy to code, this is not easy to code. This is time taking and this is not time taking. To get into that intuitive nature, you need to start narrating. CRC card facilitates that narration. Because I told you that you are narrating. But how well you, you narrate? Because that demands much more deeper understanding of the domain. To circumvent these kind of things where you need to have much more experience, this kind of mind hacks like CRC cards were introduced. Now let me draw how a typical CRC card looks. If you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. And post this, I'm going to take some questions so that we are all on the same page. File new. Don't save. CRC card is like a simple postcard. In our C language, replace wherever I say class with a struct. Just that a class will have member functions and attributes. A structure can also have member functions and attributes, but generally we don't do that. So, put a vertical line and a horizontal line. Here your structure will slowly evolve. How? I will tell. Here your responsibilities come. Responsibilities can be member functions. And collaborations is with what other structure or what other module do I need to collaborate to satisfy what I need to do. Here you can come with attributes. This is like it, it tells what you are. For example, let us say I want to talk about I am not expecting that you will create an app but let us take I want to create struct app. Or class app. It's a hypothetical case, trying to fit into our requirement. So I have this, I have this struct. What is the first thing do you think should be as a member in this struct? Anyone? It's an application through which I can type something like there is a field called temperature. I type a number and I say send and that application sends it through you what but a lightweight http packet so what do you think if at all you have to write that struct app what should be the first variable or attribute that you think in this particular struct anyone type in the chat box or unmuted integer temperature perfect okay i say int temp Okay, because temperature can be with decimal point, let us make it float. Is it okay, Umer? I am making it float. Yeah. What do you what what more variables do you think can be part of this structure? If you want to work with me personally where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. One is you have to accept the temperature what user is giving. Then towards in destination. Okay, can you elaborate what do you mean by source and destination? 
uh basically destination only where we we will mention the ip or the any modif- uh, notable label of the receiving device okay float required temperature what is this float required temperature umer i did not get float control temp well So what is this care star? Because it's you are you are talking about a string. What does the string signify? IP address of thermostat. Ah uh, yes, IP address of the thermostat. So, okay, great. So let us simplify. Let us not get into the complication of pointers. I will say int thermostat underscore id some number because I have three thermostats, four thermostats in my house. I have one temp thermostat. thermostat id okay what more let us say some hypothetical thing i am making it part of a struct only i don't know whether it will allow it or not but let me say okay let me say state state yes now what is this state s yes. maybe for particular term maybe for some particular thermostat id the app will display whether the thermostat is active or faulty or something so that i create an enum saying that state active state <coughs> state offline state online or something because let imagine an app where i have two ic one turn one icon of thermostat id 1 id 2 then if if there is a red dot beside it i will conclude that this thermostat is offline something happened to it if it is green then it is online so some state the point i am trying to tell is because now i am talking and i am trying to tell everything that i want to tell from the perspective of app don't you think i am getting the members of app yes no had it been now a c++ class now whatever bhargav told it int get set maybe these will become member functions so the app object have member functions which will get the value and set the value now what i will do because this is not class i will put my responsibility here it is the responsibility of the app to set the temperature it is the responsibility of the app to get the temperature making sense now here comes collaboration can the app do all the things by itself what do you think can the app do every if you want to work with me personally where i guarantee to work with you until you secure a well paid job book a one on one call with me link is in the description everything by itself if you were to write app dot c will you write everything inside that file only let me put like this yeah then what will you do i like we will decouple based on the functionalities decouple what decouple whom a uh, decoupling based on the functionalities of the particular code which we are writing for example we want to uh, only want to the want the monitoring of the temperature then we will decouple it from the main app app dot c into the monitoring dot c kind of thing uh, and also let's say we want to then 
craft the http packet which you said which we will be sending so that would be uh, the separate module uh, http.c something like that yeah so i i i may not agree with that i am not agreeing the first part what you told like monitoring or something because monitoring can be a separate function as such but as a module if you say yes http and amrut told separate uart also so what i am trying to now say is this so let me share the screen i need to collaborate with uart and i need to collaborate with lightweight http is this clear for everyone you you are you are active participation in the project gets decided in the first two sessions only i am not just saying like that i have seen in code to career challenge one in the first two to you will be there but you will be very passive and you will be contemplating what oh, man i am not understanding i am not understanding what happened what happened the light at the end of the tunnel will take mid of third week or something then you will see that ah okay but by the time many things would have been done you would have missed the precious learning sir i want to ask something hello yeah yeah go ahead yeah so uh, sir as you are telling the suppose the app uh, like uh, app is the also on the responsibility part and the collaboration we are taking the uart and the http but it will also is it only on the uart and the http or like suppose uh, the we are actually getting the data from the sensor so isn't it the sensor also responsible for the um, uh, like uh, means the app is not dependent on the uh, sensor also or uh, how the uh, sensor data when it is actually getting through the adc to the cpu then the process data is also a dependent part of the the app is also dependent on the uh, process data also no? right uh, so maybe i was thinking that way yeah 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 i understand that you see now he shubankar actually went to such a low level like adc this that this is precisely what we don't want to do now <laughs> what happens when your mind gets so much of information like as they say too many cooks spoil the broth we we really don't want to get we really don't want to understand like how that value how adc red and all those things it's not our job now maybe when you are narrating something like struct sensor or struct thermostat there the thermostat is worried about what to do how to read temperature and to precisely answer your question till th this is making sense crc card till now what is there on the screen is it making sense yes can i remove it um there were uh, additional requirement of like authentication uh, encryption this also will come at a collaboration sorry Uh, in the requirements, uh, authentication was there, and also the packet has to be encrypted. So those both also will come under collab. They they are use cases. Now, when you are elaborating the use case, yes, obviously, see your class will be defined, and this is only an illustration. And I really don't know whether you will come with struct app or not. It even does not matter for me. You you would come up with some other real class and. you you say that i don't want this high level class but i will go with some struct console and do these two or three things but yes when you are saying that i want to encrypt and all those things do you want to put it as a small algorithm that you call it you put a small function inside all the utils kind of one file and call them or you want to make it a class is a choice amrut you asked this question right yeah yeah so now this kind of encryption decryption authentication all this funda right i will put it everything in your utils file so that comes separate from the collab and the resource it's a choice is what i am trying to say 
Okay. Now that utils.c and utils.h, I will I will make libutil.a. My choice. Or I will put authentic class authentication. Or I will say class authenticator. Class encryptor. And I create an object by putting it into a struct or something. So these are all design decisions, which is a low level kind of design. What we are now trying to understand is the high level design. So in that process, if you feel that, okay, I want to have a class for it. And you are, when you are repeatedly saying your narrative, your storytelling and all those things, and you frequently see this authentication and all those things, that time when you feel that, okay, I can have this as a class, go ahead and do it. Yeah. See, there, there isn't like good or bad designs. In fact, there are. But un until you don't experiment, how will you know it? The whole point now is you need to experiment that and see. So I gave you the two aspects where all these functionalities can be put into a library so that many modules can use it or you create into a class so that you have an objects or all those things so that whoever needs it will create an instance of that and do the required stuff. Yeah. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Okay. I forgot what I was supposed to tell. Now the thing is, uh, I, I we started off with Subankar's question where he did uh, this. Uh, I told about he went into the low level thing and we don't want it. Yeah. Now I got it. See, let us take. Shubankar, you in your case only because you were saying that why not the collaboration with sensor, right? Because ultimately it's the sensor value that is needed. Yes. But if you see, if I am a user and this is the smart thermostat system, which is the infrastructure and all those things, the one who responds ultimately is also like for example, if I say get, then this fellow should actually set right in the some memory and I can make it as thermostat. Thermostat is also an actor. Yes. Thermostat is not actually somebody I use. Thermostat also can do something. For example, let us say this is a logging system. This is not a user. So what I would be saying thermostat, the smart thermostat at periodical intervals, it will say push the data, push the data, push the data. And this is what people who have done that IoT work with Arduino or something, they were doing the same, same thing, right? Push the data, push the data, push the data. Yes? Maybe using MQTT or whatever. So I am pushing the data and this is a logging unit. If this is a recording unit, I will say get, get, get. And this will be saying set, set, set. So in my opinion, I consider thermostat to be another actor because it also interacts with the system. The boundary of the system is, which is that HTTP protocol and all those things. Because thermostat cannot go beyond certain, or thermostat also has a boundary beyond which it cannot act. And user also has a boundary beyond which it, he cannot act. So the common example, that I have read and you also would have read is a user's interaction with a ATM. If, if you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. If I want to draw a money, I have my card, I insert into the slot. Whatever interactions I do with the ATM, I cannot go beyond ATM. Make sense? Yes, ATM might be connecting to some server, authenticating me and doing all the things. But the system is ATM, right? Right. Yeah. So when I am interacting with the ATM, what are the use cases I do? Get money. Deposit money. Deposit. Change pin. Check balance. You see the, the use cases are well defined. But... Are they crossing the boundary of ATM? No. 
but each is a different use case and their interaction with the database or security or anything is unique or it is different. Making sense? If your use cases are done, trust me, the next steps are very, very simple for you. Any question? This is really heavy. So I, I want to stop here and I want to ask, do you have any questions? Because now you need to, you have two tasks. You need to create an essay of your understanding about requirements. And I highly recommend that you stick to the must requirements and create, understand the use case, what is a use case diagram, actor, boundary, this, that. There is something called extended use cases and all those kind of things. It's your intellectual gratification for you to go in. But use that thing and the fifth chapter narration, how to take a requirement and blow it up into an essay. Tie all these things, put them on a common platform. And if you see them, you will see how that story easily gets transitioned to use case diagrams. To one use case diagram I already told, which is set. If you brood over this set and also keep your requirements document by the side, you will easily come up with the other use cases. At this point of time, do not even think, is my use case valid or invalid or something? By chance, if you come up with an invalid use case, when you are doing it, you will feel it valid. You come back, you will tear that page. It happened. It will happen. Your mind will tell whether it is a valid use case or invalid use case. It cannot go wrong. Because we have seen systems like that. It's not a new thing. It is just that we did not step back and we did not analyze what would have gone into creation of those kind of systems. This is your opportunity now to take a step back and understand this. This is where the layman approach of, I would not say layman, or somebody who does not have an understanding of what gets into design versus people who know how to design comes into play. Any questions? So Ajay, one question. Uh, I hope we got all the GitHub IDs and uh, LinkedIn IDs of everyone, right? Not at all. Someone has create has to create, and I got. Only... Can you all put your GitHub uh, link and uh, your LinkedIn handle here, like your complete LinkedIn link and GitHub link here? Or better would be. Instead of here, please send to Ajay. Yeah. So Amrut, we, we got from him, right? Amrut, we got LinkedIn and GitHub. So Amrut, did you send your work? Just a minute. Just a minute. Sir. Sorry, I'll, 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 I'll ask. I'll, you, you, keep, you keep checking. But Amrut, did you send your uh, LinkedIn ID and GitHub ID? Yeah, LinkedIn. Uh, uh... You are on mute. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, LinkedIn had shared. Uh, I think GitHub had just shared it now. Yeah, Subankar? Yeah, sir. Uh, LinkedIn, I I will send. I have talked with Ajay. I will send him tomorrow morning, sir. GitHub, right? GitHub, you are sending tomorrow, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, Sagar, Apka. I am sending right away. Yeah. Chetan, I think you have sent right. LinkedIn, I know you have sent. GitHub? Yeah, yeah. GitHub, I will send. Yes. Yeah. Anirudh? I am not in, sir. I will share. Sir. Yeah, yeah. Please uh, send it. Yeah, yes, yes. Both. yeah. Viresh? 
I need to send. Yeah. yeah. So because uh, we we want to put it into the dashboard so that it will be easy for us to look. Yeah, we click the LinkedIn link and we just go to that profile, right? So that's easy for us. So Raghavendra, you have sent. No, sir. I have sent LinkedIn profile link, but uh, I have not sent the GitHub. I will I will send tomorrow. GitHub link only. Yeah, Ananda. Yes, sir. Uh, both is ready. I am sharing it now. No, you shared okay. to Ajay only. Aditya? Okay. Yes, sir. I am shared the GitHub link and LinkedIn link. Yeah, Umer? Both the links. Amrut, you haven't sent the uh, LinkedIn link. No, one second. Umer, uh, did you send the LinkedIn uh, thing and the GitHub link? Uh, sir, I am sending right now. Yeah, please. Okay. Amrut, can you send again the LinkedIn link? And GitHub also, if you have. Yeah, yeah I'm sending. I'm, yeah, 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 I'm sharing it. I, I just sent you on WhatsApp. Yeah. I got your hi. So he, he, here is why these things are imp important. GitHub anyways will be the proof that uh, you have done your uh, diligence. You have, you, you have you diligently you have done your uh, coding thing and all those things. And LinkedIn will work as your living resume that you have gone through this code to career challenge. When a recruiter sees that every day you are talking about challenge and you have gone through this exercise, trust me, it means a lot. I have after code to career challenge one, I have had recruiters reaching out to me saying that, can I go for an interview with this person? If you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. Whatever is there is your objective, whether it's to get a new job or grow in your career, learn something new. Your living resume will be your LinkedIn profile. Yeah. Great. If there are no questions, I think we'll conclude the call. Anyone has any questions? I am repeating, your questions will become tomorrow your box. Sir, can you repeat the what you have tasked you, you have said now? You, you Just... have one, if you have not done the previous task of writing an essay about the requirements that is there. Yes. You would have read the chapter 5, the requirements document. You have seen how the set use case has been created. Now you need to Think deeply and create more use cases pertaining to the requirements. Yeah. So you know that the actor is the user. Now we have the thermostat can be another user. And you have known, you know also the kind of use cases now you want to write. I gave the technique of class responsibility collaboration. <clears throat> so, so I'll conclude with this statement. To create class responsibility collaboration, you need to do something called as role play. Now imagine Sagar wants to create use cases or Sagar wants to understand what are the classes that constitute. Now what he does, he will sit on one side of the table saying that, okay, I am now the user. I am this, 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 all the attributes will come. Like you saw struct app, right? In temperature, this, that, everything has come. Now he says, okay, now I have to send temperature. How do I send? He will ask that question. It's a role play. Then he says, no, no, I can't send it alone. I need the help of you what? So you'll say, hey, you, you what? I need your help. So that's a collaboration. You have your responsibility to display the temperature, but you need to collaborate with you what? Now, when you say you are collaborating, you are effectively calling one of the functions of you what? That's what I mean. So you, he, now he jumps to the other side of the table and he picks up the UART, UART card and he will say, 
Okay, I am you what? So what do I need? I need a baud rate, this, that, that, everything, stop bits, whatever, no stop bit. And he will say, with whom do I collaborate? Or who will call me? What are my responsibilities? My responsibilities is to send this, that, and all those things. Who will call me or where, with whom do I collaborate? My, my collaboration would be with this class, this class, this class, because app class will call me. So I need to have the one function ready for him or her. Now you understood what I'm trying to do with the, with the role plays? Yes, sir. Now with this, what will happen is every class or struct will automatically evolve. Now, finally, what will happen is you are just playing with that one for 25 or 30 or whatever, what temperature value you are just taking that 40 value as a temperature and you are letting it flow through the structures, functions and all those things and finally taking it somewhere. Clear? It is as simple as that. And I am simplifying way too much. But yes, the path it takes might be very, very complicated. That's a different thing altogether. Clear? Yeah. So this is okay. your task. You know, tomorrow we don't have thing, but your LinkedIn post will go. From tomorrow, we are also going to observe your tagging. So it's C-O-D-E, number two, C-A-R-E-E-R. -E -E That's the thing. Sometimes uh, chat GPT, if you are using, I know many of you are fans of chat GPT, your post tell that. And chat GPT is generating carrier. No carrier, it's carrier. C-A-R-E-E-R. -E -E yeah. Great. So see you again uh, on Friday. I, I just had uh, one confirmation I wanted from you. Uh, as a system, there are just three uh, units right here. As a user, one is a thermostat as a interface. Other one is your HVAC unit. Uh, your you as a user, and then the thermostat. Yes. And then you will have uh, the heating or cooling element, HVAC unit. No, no, don't don't bring so much so complicated that we don't we don't want that HVAC thing altogether. We we don't need it. We are okay. only worried about, see what thermostat will, because of setting of certain value in thermostat, what happens to HVAC, we are not at all worried about. Yeah. My 25 degrees reaches to thermostat, I want to read thermostat setting and it is reaching to me, done. Okay. The project so, is only that. In between the system is so-called this HTTP, that, this, because I cannot go beyond HTTP, I cannot go beyond UART. Right. Yeah, HVAC is not there. Okay. Uh, it it'll just send a query, or uh, like like uh, what should you consider that unit as which response or which you send it to? Yeah, can you rephrase your question? I did not get your question. Uh, because um, when you uh, when it has to display, for example, you 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 uh, raise the get query or the uh, it will keep pinging continuously to get the dis for the display or mm -hmm. when you want to set it or some presets you want to send it that's what you'll send it to so uh in terms of class or a how how, how do you think of that as a visualizing or in a a unit a, like a database or um I, i'm not getting in that terms like okay let me simplify what, how thermostat interacts and get the things done by HVAC, we are not considered. We are not. Okay. Thermostat, we are assuming that at any point of time, thermostat has memory to store our value. Thermostat has the value that I, I am interested in. That's it. How it gets those values, I am not at all interested. Okay. So HVAC is not there. Okay. It's just uh, you uh, define in the same function and then you print it out in for it. So because I know print. that HVAC, uh, I know that uh, thermostat show, stores that value. So for me, all the get interactions are with thermostat. If the information is available with thermostat, why do I worry about HVAC or what is happening behind it? Hmm. Um, because um, if you define that variable within the same function, what 
what are you requesting the get function from? Thermostat only. Your get function lands up with thermostat and thermostat will have all the values, the settings, the time. You, you say that at 5 o'clock do this, this, that and all those things. It has that. From where thermostat gets, it is not of concern for us. No, I, I answered this question assuming that I understood your question. But if you uh -huh. have anything... It's just that uh, I, I'm, I'm not able to visualize. Okay, we are separating uh, UI and the thermostat as a unit. Yeah, it, it just, uh, Your UI can be even a console also. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let okay. me draw the picture. See, you are, you are, you as a user, and yeah. this is the thermostat. There is right. so much behind the thermostat which I am not at all worried. Okay. All the data gets fed into this. It has all the intelligence. I have a medium. Over the medium, I am saying, which is now a UART. Right. And over this medium, I am defining my lightweight HTTP packet. Right. That's it. Behind this, what is there? I am not worried. Behind this, what is there? I am not worried. Okay. Got it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I wanted to know that uh, since you are telling, yes, sir, one minute. Uh, I will open the requirements document once. Yeah. Yeah. So, sir, uh, like, uh, like in the fourth main application part, which you have written that uh, sensor interaction part, uh, implement a module to accurate and, uh, for accurate and reliable temperature uh, reading. This include calibration routines and error compression. So, like, I wanted to ask that uh, whether we are going to like, like fake, fake it or like we have to actually do, do that part. Like, how is it going to work? I'm a bit confused on that. No, no, you, if you don't have a hardware where you have you get that hex value and you want to take yeah. normalized value or average or something. Yeah, right. Okay. So we are basically assuming that uh, already we have the value from the sensor. The thermostat already has it. We just need to focus from the thermostat to the app. This part we only need to focus. Yes. Okay. okay. In in real life also it is like that. Okay. In, in real life, systems are running seamlessly because there is so much of abstraction at play. Okay. If you are part of, if you are part of, how should I say, the low, the low level layers of the, that abstraction, that's a different ball game altogether. You need to understand that, okay, I want to go and implement that protocol. I want to do and uh, go and implement driver or uh, driver for that sensor. That's all. Somebody has written the code, but the level that we are trying to understand is this subset. Nevertheless, in the process of sending the packet, we are trying to create a protocol and you are using a UART driver. So I discounted all the other abstract, all the other complexities and I have abstracted. Nevertheless, I have built into this stack a mechanism so that you end up writing a driver and creating a protocol. So that you don't miss on the part that, oh, this is too high level, nothing is there. And even I don't want like that. I want that stack to be covered. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Okay then. Yeah. Please get on. Please come on. If you want to work with me personally, where I guarantee to work with you until you secure a well-paid job, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Link is in the description. To the camera so that. Ajay can take a snap. Second. Yes, sir. Thank you. 
Okay. Well, I'll take honor. I'll take honor. People are serious, Doctor Use case. <laughs> yeah, I felt like that. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, see you all. Bye. Bye.